So I want everybody to understand the way Katie makes her money is how I make my money. Yeah. This is how, like. Been on like so many of your webinars since I was that third year PT student, you know, and, so and you I saw it. Seen you doing these webinars, and you know, I was your client back in 2018. But then yeah. it took me, you know, how many more years to actually work with you in your higher tier program? Right. Um, and I was still attending your webinars all throughout that time right. and seeing what you're doing, how you're packaging it. And now I'm replicating that same sort of model. You guys, I want every single one of you to do what I'm doing today to make money. This is how I do it. This is Secrets for Success. Welcome to the Secrets for Success podcast. I'm your host, Greg Todd. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I have a special guest on today. It's actually a speaker at SSHC Live 2024. Is it okay if, well, it's my podcast, so I can do it. Get your tickets at SSHCLive2024.com. We're going to have an amazing time. It's going to be great. But more importantly, uh, it is going to be, the the event theme is going to be innovation. And the person that I have on today, I believe, is a product of innovation in healthcare. And so Katie Blanchard, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Greg, so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to be a part of your world and a part of your big event coming up, which can be life-changing for people. Wow, okay. You know, so people say life-changing. They say life-changing and it's like, uh, act up until you're blowing smoke. What, like, what does that mean? Like, you, you've been to the event. Did, did the event really change your life? You know, Greg, it can be life changing if you let it be life changing. Mm, okay. So you can attend the event, you can consume the content, but unless you do something with it when you leave the event, then you know you're not going to change anything. So it's about right. what you do after the event. That okay. Can be life changing. All right. So so let's talk about this. Okay, I wasn't going to go this direction, but it's okay. I want to go here now. So last year you came to the event, okay? Uh, and we're gonna, and, and by the way, we're gonna talk about um, Katie's ascension in the way that she has innovated what she does as a physical therapist in a way that's allowing her to basically have, I would say somewhere between 200 to 500 times more impact in the way she's doing things today than what she was doing a, a year ago, okay? So let's talk about kind of how this all started. Why don't you just take us back first to how long you've been a therapist, what you were doing up until the event last year. So why don't we do that? Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I have been a physical therapist since 2018. And so practicing for about six years. And I also, I always had this seed in me of wanting to do something outside the box, wanting to be an entrepreneur. But I never really had someone to show me what that could look like. And I'm a very loyal person. So as I built my skills being a new grad PT, I was building myself to become a better employee and hopefully, you know, get paid a little bit more for those different skills that I was learning. Things like social media content creation, um, you know, delving into a specific niche, which when I first started out was actually working with girls basketball players mm -hmm. because I was a collegiate basketball player um, at a school in Chicago during undergrad. And so I identified with that specific, you know, niche. And so, you know, I always had this seed of like, I want to do something more serving this specific population beyond just the clinic. And so that's why I entered Greg's world when I was still in my third year of PT school. I joined his Smart Success for Physical Therapists mm -hmm. program um, when it was first growing. I was part of season five there. And that's when I first got introduced to learning things beyond the clinic and how you can, you know, up your skill levels to create new opportunities for yourself. Mm. Okay, so let's let's talk about this a little bit. This is back in 2018. Mm -hmm. You were a student. Back then, I want you all to understand that, that are listening in right now. I initially created that program to help 
students become more valuable new grads. It was not initially set up for everybody to become an entrepreneur. Now, the things that allow you to be more valuable will also equip you to be an entrepreneur. Okay, yeah. but but the program was really created for someone like Katie, and Katie's intentions at that time. She, you, you sound so much like me, by the way. All right, like my job, my hope coming out of school, Katie, was that I would work for that job. It was held south at the time. I'd work for that place for like 20, 25 years. And, and I'm just a really loyal guy. And I think, you know, that being around me now for many years, like I'm, I'm, I'm really big into loyalty and taking care of the people that are in my circle and then just, just lifting them up over time, you know? Um, and so that's what I thought was going to happen with my job. Uh, and, I thought that as long as I got better, my situation would get better. So it was a very similar to you, right? And then obviously that didn't happen. And then I started making lateral moves and this and that and da 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 da. So if it sounds very similar, uh, so now I realized that I was trying to get better, but my situation wasn't going to get better. And I think you kind of at some point had that realization, would you say? Yes, definitely. Okay, yeah. I mean you know, I like met my goal out of school of, you know, applying for jobs and getting into a really awesome, um, you know, sports performance based practice where I could right. work with youth and like semi professional athletes. And I was like, yes, this is my end goal. I'm a new grad. I'm doing this right away. Super excited. And then you get into the grind of more patients on my schedule, more patients on my mm. schedule and match with not a great clinic culture. And I was like, man, um, this is not what I was looking for. Um, and from there, that's when I was like, I have to create something that is my own in order to meet my needs, both financially and, you know, what I enjoy and how I want to help people. Okay. So let's talk about that. Talk about your genesis to now creating something that is your own. Yes. Tell so, me how it came to be. You know, I... For a few years, once I was a new grad, I was still delving into the niche of working with women's basketball players because that's what I identified with of, I'm a women's basketball player and now I'm a PT. I tore my ACL in college playing and that's who I wanna help because I identify with that. And over time, you know, I was creating content. I was, you know, putting in some of the hours that to learn more, looking at the research. And then one day I realized, you know, something is not clicking. Like there's no traction with my audience. I have a little bit of people like following me in my content, but nothing's, you know, snagging on. And mm. so I had to have like a real reflection time with myself of, you know, is this niche, the niche that I'm the most passionate about and that I can help the most people with? Mm. And the answer to that was actually no. So although I identified with women's basketball players, you know, I wasn't the most skilled, although I, you know, went through the experience myself with an ACL tear, you know, maybe I wasn't the most skilled in treating that population. I wasn't, you know, into strength and conditioning. I wasn't in the gyms. I wasn't, you know, talking to coaches, things like that, because, you know, I tried coaching myself and I hated it. And mm. I, was like, I thought I was going to love it. I thought I was going to love being in the gym, being a PT, you know, add my PT skills to a dynamic warm up for my team. And, you know, it didn't work for me. I hated coaching. And I was like, okay, you know, self reflection time. Who else have I worked with that I really enjoy? And that I feel there's a gap in care of people who can actually educate and help. And that was working with kids who have scoliosis. So this was something that I was exposed to at the clinic level at, um, you know, the JOB that I was working. And it's something that I was told you have to treat kids with scoliosis because we have a referral source who wants to send everybody here. Mm -hmm. So I learned it just because I had to for the clinic's sake. But then I realized this is what I love to do. I love helping these kids with scoliosis and I realized there's no resources for them. So, you know, I had this thing that I identified with being a basketball player versus a gap in care in the market that I actually really enjoyed, but wasn't expecting myself to enjoy. Mm. So, you know, I closed the door on the basketball kind of, you know, niche and I opened up 
scoliosis. And now that is my main um, content that I have. And that is the main source of my business is helping both kids and adults with scoliosis. Okay, this is this is this right here. Please go back and rewind this piece, okay? Because many of you, you were stuck here. You were stuck. It is extremely important. When I talk about my five S's or I talk about the build an audience to create an offer. Okay, every single thing that I talk about, every single um, action step for those of you that are like, I need to get started. Doesn't matter if it's an online business, doesn't matter if it's a brick and mortar practice. You've got to find an audience. And many of you are, are, you got, you guys are climbing the wrong tree. Okay. And it's very similar to Katie. Um, Katie found an audience initially that she identified with, even though she didn't have a lot of passion about the way that she was going to work with that audience. And because she didn't have a lot of passion, she wasn't diving into all the different things. She hated coaching. She, there's so many things she didn't want to do. I need everybody to understand why this passion thing is so important because if you are going to be looked at as the go-to person, you're going to have to like it. Like you're going to have to want to say, okay, this thing, I want to know everything there is about it. I want to, I'm going to research it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And by the way, it ended up being scoliosis for Katie. Now she also understood this just because you have passion about it doesn't mean it's going to work. There has to be a glaring need and a gap in that area that is not being served. And so that, those are the two things, guys. Like you've got to actually have something that you're going to have a vested interest in. And if you do that, you're going to be willing to research it enough to realize, are there gaps? And a lot of times there are. And then from there, you now are onto something. Would you agree with that, Katie? Yes, for sure. And I think it's important to note, like, if you delve into a certain niche and it's not going the way you want to, it's okay to pivot. Right. You, know? and you might need to pivot, mm-hmm. you know, um, even though you've put a lot of work in up front for that one specific topic, you know, um, it's okay to pivot. And because pivoting, even though it might be a low and you're starting all over, you know, that's what you need to do to later ascend. Right. And so now people know me as the scoliosis girl. You know, right. Katie yeah. Yeah. Scoliosis. She's the scoliosis girl. Anything's fine. Like, oh, go to Katie over there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. Oh, okay. So now you you have this enlightening moment. You figure out, all right, I'm going to go the scoliosis direction. I love it. I'm interested in it. Um, there is a gap in the marketplace. Okay. So now, now what? Now what happens? Yeah. So I just started my own business, an online business called Shroth Boss. And I started just putting content out there. I had a Facebook group. Um, I had my personal Facebook page, my business Facebook page, Instagram, and YouTube. And I started putting together, you know, exercise tutorials, a sample class of what scoliosis exercise looks like. And first it grew on YouTube. I had people, you know, saying, oh my gosh, nobody has ever shown me that there's specific exercises for scoliosis that is different than general physical therapy. So on these platforms, I was giving, 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 and then giving more. So I was putting mm-hmm. all the answers out there for people. So it's all there, you know? Um, I think that's what really helped gain traction of people um, you know, starting to notice me as the scoliosis girl, Shroth boss, you know, someone that can help both kids and adults with scoliosis is because I was giving tangible things people could do in my content and it was starting to help them already. And it was free. So, you know, really giving up front was, you know, the biggest thing that has really helped to grow my audience, which is the base of my business, because without an audience without eyes on my business, you don't have too much, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so there's a couple of things that I think uh, are important. Did you ever feel as though you were giving too much? Because a lot of people feel that. They're like, oh my gosh, if I give so much, what's going to happen uh, next? Because I'm not going to have anything else to give. I, I, I would like for you to answer that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I got a lot of like 
lash back from other therapists who are certified in the Schrock method for scoliosis because, you know, they said, Katie, you're giving away all of our secrets, all of our treatments publicly online. And like, this is a proprietary thing. You can't teach people it online. They need to come see you in person mm. and you can then show them what to do. It needs to be custom and, um, you know, it's a proprietary thing. So you're giving out all this information and that's not okay. Um, so other people were telling me that. Mm. And then at one point I thought, you know, maybe I am giving too much. Like everything I teach in my paid programming, I have it out there somewhere for free. Okay. But the key is the organization of it and the decision making in my paid programming that helps people the most compared to a how-to tutorial. Okay, I think you guys need to rewind that back a minute and understand that right there is the game. I know you're going to teach this on stage a little bit more at the event, but guys, that's basically it. Yep. Everything that I talk about, I don't have like, oh, this is free stuff and this is paid stuff. I, like, I don't do that, okay? It's whatever I feel the audience needs to hear. If there is something that I was sharing in my paid group, when it's time to create content, I don't mind sharing that in my free channels as well, okay? I don't mind. The difference with free versus paid is in a few different things, okay? Number one, the information for the most part is the same. It's just the organization of the information. And people that pay are people that respect their time. And they want the information, but they want you to be able to summarize it in a way that's gonna allow them to be able to consume the information as a, in as timely of a manner as possible. That is what people pay for. It is important for you to give the goods, yes. okay? That's what people pay for, all right? People also pay for experiences. Like, Katie, as, as your business continues to grow, we'll talk about how you're getting customers in a second. But as your business continues to grow, you'll see that people pay for community and they pay for unique experiences. Like, every single high-ticket program that I'm a part of, I'm only a part of it because of the community and because of unique experiences. The information, yeah, it's cool, but, like, if I was willing to you know, browse and, and surf YouTube enough, I, I could probably find it, but I don't, I don't have the, t or I don't want to invest the time into doing that. But even with that said, like, I know I can get the information, you know, somewhere else. For me, it's community and it's experiences. That is the big thing. Community experiences, time. Community experiences, time. If you understand that and you're just compiling information for people in the quick, quickest way, you know, possible, give them a really amazing experience give them an awesome community where there's other people that are going through the thing that they're dealing with as well, people will pay lots of money for that. So um, let's talk about how you're getting customers. Uh, you're getting customers really through two different ways. You have a main offer and you have a community group, correct? Correct, yes. So I have a main core offer, mm -hmm. uh, which is $1,000. And then I have a lower tier, a continuity offer, a membership mm -hmm. community um, that is a monthly subscription. And so, you know, I have ways that people can enter into my world at different price points mm -hmm. based on, you know, their financial status, but also on how much help they feel they need. Right. Okay. Gotcha. And the way that you bring these people in is how i mean you obviously have traffic and you have a pretty big following but explain how you get these people to become your customers yes so my instagram following has grown substantially um so i kind of transitioned from youtube to instagram and from there with a lot of eyes on my content i have put together webinars and the webinar has been monthly and it's a vehicle to really get one-on-one, one-on-one I say, um, mm -hmm. get in front of people in a one-to-many way where they feel like they're one-on-one -on -one yeah. in a mm -hmm. webinar format. Yeah, this is amazing. Okay, so in the webinar, form, you're basically building your audience primarily on Instagram. You shift it from YouTube over to Instagram um, and, and it's grown quite a bit. Can we talk about why did you make the shift from YouTube to Instagram? What did you see in the market? Like, what made you do that? Yeah. Um, so, 
YouTube, I was getting a lot of people um, who were a little bit older, like population, coming mm-hmm. to find my content there. Okay. And really delving into the long form of long, drawn out explanations and tutorials. Instagram started to grow a lot quicker than YouTube because I was drawing in more of the younger population, like parents who have kids with scoliosis who are in their like 30s, early 40s. Um, And reels have been huge for me, Um, you know, putting out shorter, catchier things to get people's attention, entertain them, but also educate them on scoliosis and um, really build their trust. Mm. Gotcha. That's awesome. That is amazing. So let's talk about this growth of Instagram. It's been pretty cool to watch. So where were you at when you started Instagram, I guess maybe a year ago versus where you were at at the end of 2023 going in 2024? And then what has happened since then? Yes. So I started my Instagram page, Shroth Boss, probably a little over a year ago. Um, and, you know, consistently posting a few times per week. Um, and I built a, a following probably about to 700, 800 followers. Um, so pretty decent, you know, people are pretty engaged once they're into my world. And then by December, going into January, December 2023 to January 2024, I started to commit to posting every single day consistently and posting reels that had certain things that attracted my audience in the messaging. So I really delved into what is my audience looking for and what are those keywords? So for me, you know, I thought people are researching the Schroth method for scoliosis or scoliosis exercises when in reality, People aren't looking for those things. They're looking for core strength for scoliosis because their doctor has told them that as long as you strengthen your core, the stronger your core is, then that's going to help your back. They're looking for stretches in yoga for scoliosis Mm. because that's what they've been told in the past um, is going to help them most. So I started using those types of words like stretching, core strengthening, um, and then, you know, people started to really grab onto and identify with every time I put an x-ray of a scoliosis curve up onto my reel, um, like during an exercise, so they could see what the x-ray looks like compared to the movements happening in in the exercise. So those like two things combined, you know, the words I was using and then the pictures with an x-ray started to really grab people's attention. And that's when my Instagram page really took off starting in January, 2024. And it's steadily been growing. And now we're in the beginning of May and I have over 30,000 followers who are engaged in my content, um, you know, commenting on my posts, asking for my lead magnets because um, my messaging is there. Right, okay. I hope you guys are getting this. Katie grew from 700 followers. It took her, basically she started a page uh, around this time last year and it grew to 700 followers probably in I guess maybe seven to nine months or something like that, right? And then, but you guys, it took that time. All of her content was working. It was working on her behalf. It was making her realize what people want and what people don't want. And over that that's the big thing, guys. It's not about, it's it's about putting the stuff out there and testing and figuring out what is going to resonate with my audience. And I don't think our content was any worse than what it was, you know, today. It's just that now she knows, okay, this is what people were looking for. And this is what the algorithm is going to reward me for. And so she starts doing that, understanding that there are different types of content that you can do today where Instagram is saying, hey, if you put out what we want you to put out, we will grow your channel for you. And it doesn't take long for the channel to explode once you figure it out. That's a key words. Once you figure it out. And so she figured it out. She's at 30 plus thousand uh, followers on the account. And now that's led to her doing these webinars every single month. Now, let's talk about the webinars a little bit before we finish up. I think this will be really important because this is what I'm going to have you talk about a bit at the event 
You said that you basically do one webinar a month. You have two different offers. Can we talk about like what you're saying on the webinar? And can you talk about how different that is versus what you would do or say to a child that was coming into the clinic that you're working at for the same problem? Can we talk about that? Correct, yes. So what I love about webinars is basically the way I structure my webinar is I'm doing an evaluation like I would do in the clinic, but now I'm doing it one myself to many to, you know, I've had 966 people on my last webinar um, Mm. or register for my last webinar, I should say. Um, And so the crazy part is I'm taking what I would do in person in an evaluation the way I educate, the way I screen for scoliosis, you know, the interventions that I would give first, that's what I'm doing in the webinar and really focusing in on the education point. So people Mm. love when I can take what type of scoliosis they have, a specific curve pattern, and draw it out for them. So, you know, using a visual to gain trust is huge. So, you know, using things like a whiteboard on the webinar or using, I use something that is like a long bendy ruler that I twist to represent a scoliosis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, To really show the concepts and the why behind them exactly as I would do in a one-on-one evaluation. Um, And those visuals really help understanding and then that trust factor of, okay, this is the solution that I need because Katie has shown me right here this is my curve pattern, and this is how we're going to help it. And the webinar takes you uh, an hour, hour and a half, two hours? Yeah. What, it's yeah. about an hour of, you know, actual webinar content, okay. you know, including, you know, patient examples, testimonials, things like that to, you know, further strengthen my content. And then about a half hour of question and answer where people can just throw questions at me and, you know, I do my best to answer that for them. Wow. Okay. So you could do an hour in a clinic and do an eval where you're working one-to-one with a person. You have done these webinars. You've done a few of them now. And you've had as many as 900 and something people register. How, what, what's the most amount of people you've actually had watch it? I've had 300 people attend live. Okay. And on average, they stayed for an hour and a half okay. out of an hour and a 45-minute webinar. Okay, I need everybody to get this. When you guys are asking me, I kid you not, Katie, I got three people just in the last few hours in my DMs saying, I'm sick of trading all my time for money. I've even, in one case, I actually, two, two of them are like, I built a cash practice and I'm still trading all my time for money. What do I do? I was like, don't trade your time for money. <laughs> Well, 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 what exactly? Well, I'm trading my time for free with you right now. So, you know, go f- look at one of my videos and I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Since we're here, Katie, why don't you explain to them that there is a difference between one to one versus one to 300. And the difference is what you make. <laughs> okay. All right. It's not really any different with the actual eval, right? It really isn't that much different, right? Okay. You're doing it probably at your house. Okay. Yeah. The actual content is exactly the same. It's not yeah. anything special or wow or different or like adding bonuses, flashy things. It's what I do during an eval. It's what you do during eval. Sure that's structured and educational. That's all you need. And the cool thing is, you know, I can help one person that walks into a clinic physically on that webinar. Plus people who watch the replay, you know, I'm helping probably thousands of people over the last three months. And to have that sort of impact of helping that many people, whether they purchase my product or not, I'm giving them value and building my goodwill until they become a customer eventually. I, you know, this is fantastic. And I'm I'm just so proud of you for what you've been able to do. Um, And yes, there's good money that she's been able to make. Uh, you know, behind this. But I think what's so cool is the fact that we as healthcare providers, in your case and my case, you know, physical therapists, 
we always say we're so frustrated with the misinformation that's out there. We spent all this time, this money, these resources in learning these high level skills, but most of us aren't using it. We're in a clinic every day and it's, and, and I wouldn't say we're not using it, but we're using it on such a unleveraged like vehicle of just working one person at a time. Whereas for you, you're helping hundreds of people in that 60 to a hundred minute, you know, time together. Now, can I ask you something? Um, you're helping these people. You know, I've seen what people have said after your webinar. I've said amazing things. Um, do people get upset when you have given them a, uh, like your offer? I mean, do you have like massive pieces, like an onslaught of people coming at you or, or like, please tell me the truth. I want to know what, what, what has happened. Honestly, you know, there's been a, a one or two people who reach out and say, like, I can't believe you're charging a thousand dollars to work with people virtually. But that is very minimal compared yeah. to the people who are like, oh, my God, I get to work with Katie Blanchard, the Schroth boss, the scoliosis girl. And yeah. she just demonstrated to me at a high level of communication in a way that I can understand. And she is the one who's going to teach me what I need to know to help manage my spine. Right. Guys, this is. Yeah, people are excited. They're know? excited. They're excited. Um, I, I, I think this is just so important because most, most clinicians, most healthcare providers have absolutely no clue they can do what you're doing. Um, this is, guys, here's the deal. Here's what I'm not going to do, okay? I am not going to be that coach and consultant that basically tells you how to do something and it's something that I'm not doing. Like, like, isn't that crazy? And you, and Katie, you know, I very rarely ever talk about other coaches. I don't talk about, there's no, I don't have competition. Okay. Like I am me. Okay. Well, we know that. All right. But I don't talk about it because my, like, like I just need to stay in my lane, but I do think there is something really important. I think there's so many people out there that are teaching people on the thing that they're not doing. So it's like, if you're teaching someone on how to build a cash-based practice, but you're a coach and consultant, well, why aren't you doing it? Right, yeah. Like, like, okay, like, so, so I want everybody to understand the way Katie makes her money is how I make my money. Yeah. This is how, like. I've been on, like, so many of your webinars since I was that third-year PT student, you know. And, so and you I saw it. Seen you doing these webinars. And, you know, I was your client back in 2018, but then yeah. it took me, you know, how many more years to actually work with you in your higher tier program. Right. Um, and I was still attending your webinars all throughout that time. Right. And seeing what you're doing, how you're packaging it. And now I'm replicating that same sort of model. You guys, I want every single one of you to do what I'm doing today to make money. This is how I do it. Yep. This is how I collapse my time. I have made nearly $500,000 take home in the clinic in a year. That is unheard of. By the way, it's really difficult because you have to have a lot of staff. You got to have a lot of people. You've got to have a lot of things going right. You got to build a lot of relationships. I have done $500,000 in a weekend on a webinar. I am not going to tell you to do something that I used to do 10 years ago. This is what I do now. Here's the beautiful thing. I already know that usually anywhere between eight to 35% of people will buy my offer. But what I do know is 100% of the people that come are so thankful because I am going to teach them something that is going to make their life better. What an amazing way to be able to give impact to people. You guys, this right here is the innovator path. What Katie is doing is what I want all of you to do. And if you're like, I can't do it, then here's what I can tell you. I can tell you that what you did in school was a total waste of time. It was a total waste of time. Okay. Now here's what I can tell you. I believe that it, it's not a waste of time for many of you. I just believe that you don't know how to communicate well. You just don't know how to package it. You have a lot of stuff that you learn. My, my wife, Katie, says 
Greg, you know what is so amazing about you? She's like, you want your gifts? You have so much useless information in your head. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, but, I was like, but, baby, that, you're right. But I've been able to package that you, that useless information and make it useful. And, and I don't know, she's joking. Kind of, I think. Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, um, this is the thing that you all must understand. You already have the information. You guys just don't know how to package it. You just don't know how to package it. And so as, as, uh, as Katie is a client of mine and I'm one of her advisors, all I, and I tell her this off camera, she's going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars from every, she, she made in the last one, you made 10 K, right? 10,000, $10,000. Yes. $10, my yeah. last webinar was my first 10 K month. And yeah. this is just the beginning. And, you know, let me tell you, I'm working on my business just two days a week and I made 10K with my one webinar. Now right. imagine once that becomes my full time and I'm doing not one webinar a month, but two webinars a month. You know, you can just see how this is going to keep growing and growing. And so that's why I'm so excited about it. Yeah, I think this is the thing that's really important for you to understand and for everybody else to understand. She had a 10K month, but she really did it. She did 10K in 90 minutes. That's what she did. Now, the money might have trickled in over this time or people watched the replay, but the work that you did was in 90 minutes. That's what you did. And if you really think about it, it's mind-blowing, right? Because the reality is this. If you can just continue to do what you're doing with traffic and you can do the same webinar but this time have 1,500 people instead of 900. And instead of getting 300 to show up, you get 600 to show up. Knowing what your webinar does, you can basically print money whenever you want. And yeah. that is the most, it's the greatest asset anyone can build. And I'm telling you all this, and I'm telling you this, Katie, as someone that has assets in many different areas, okay? Whether it is homes, whether it is mutual funds, it's IRAs, it's CDs, it's money market accounts, it's stocks, it's bonds. There is no asset that I have that is better than my ability to be able to convey a message via a one-to-many format. It is the greatest asset that I have. And now you have it. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, really it's figuring out your messaging, how you can communicate better, and then keep tweaking it, keep improving it um, to make your message clearer. And that's how, you know, that's what I'm working on so that my conversion rate for my offers gets better and better as I continue to filter more people into my webinars. Yeah, this is, I'm really, really, really just proud of what you've been able to do. And I'll leave you with this and I'll leave all the, the, uh, the listeners with this as well. In life, you get paid according to your creativity. I need everybody to understand that. You get paid according to your creativity. So creativity means that you are creating something. Okay, so Katie has created, actually we're gonna say four things, okay? She's created an offer. She's actually created two. The, the, those are the first two things she created. She created one offer that is a continuity offer. Okay. It's a membership. It's a group. Okay. And she's helping people with specific things specifically for kids and for some adults that have scoliosis. Okay. She does it in a continuity way. Things that she helps them with month over month, week over week, right? Day over day. Okay, great. That, that's the first thing she created. That came from Katie's mind. She created it. Okay. Number two, she then created an offer. It's something that is going to give people a result over a period of time, okay? So she created two things. Now, you guys know when I talk about the four levels of value, okay? She did something for the first time in her career that she wasn't able to do working for somebody else, and that is to actually exercise the use of creation. That's what she did. And those two things have allowed her to detach her time from making money. Okay, now I said she created four things, right? So here's the next two things she created. She created a communication vehicle. 
She didn't create one. She actually has two webinars out now. Okay. And the first time she did one and she did one and it was primarily for, I think more adults. And then I think the second time, or it was more kids or adults. I can't remember which one, but she created two communication vehicles. There are basically two webinars and both of them, the people loved it. And both of them, they bought her offer. Now here's the beautiful thing. Katie, do you think everybody in the United States of America that needs help with scoliosis has watched those webinars? 100% no. No, exactly. <laughs> and so here's the deal, guys. Every day as her audience continues to grow and grow and grow because her communication's gotten better, she can say, hey, you know what? Let me just take the webinar that I've already done. I've already done it. I know what to say. It's kind of like an eval. Let me just say, instead of doing one eval this week, I'm going to do two evals this week. And she can just do another eval. If she wanted to print money this Friday, I'm not saying she's going to have 900 and something people register, but she could probably have 300 or 400 people register. She decided to do it today. And she could have 100, 150 people come. And she knows about 10% of them are going to buy. And she could print money whenever she wants. And while she's printing money, she's impacting people. Doing the same eval that you're doing in an hour, getting paid by Blue Cross Blue Shield 50 bucks. You got it? I need everybody to understand that. Katie's going to be talking about that at the event, and it's going to be fantastic. Katie Blanchard, thank you so much for being on the Seekers for Success podcast. Do you have anything else that you would tell the people um, about the event or anything you want to leave them with? Um, and even your Instagram handles or whatnot. You can do that sure. too. Um, I mean, I think one of the biggest things that in addition to everything that we talked about today on the podcast here with Greg is, you know, getting out of your own way and telling yourself it's okay to do something different despite what other people will think about you or say about you. Yeah. And if you can get over that, that huge hurdle, that's when you are going to start filtering out way more content. That's when you're going to dial in your messaging and mm. you think about your audience, not about what other thing, people think of you. And most of those people are, are, are therapists, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. You so, guys are making each other broke. You're, 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 you're being such a, a, a total turd and <laughs> you guys are, you guys are afraid of disappointing each other. That's why you guys are all broke. Yeah. As soon as Golly. you that, that's when you're going to start to explode. That's when you're going to see more rapid acceleration. Wow. You know? um, so that has been absolutely key for me. Awesome. So, awesome. Tell them where to find you. So, yeah, if you want to find me, um, hop on Instagram and you can find me at Shroff Boss. Um, and then I'm also on Facebook and YouTube as well. But just look for Katie Blanchard, Shroff Boss, and you will find me. Awesome. Awesome. You'll find her at SSHC Live as well. She will be a speaker on day two in the morning. Uh, I'm going to be speaking first on how I frame uh, different one-to-many events. And then after that, I'm going to have Katie give her story of how she's done it and how she's built her Instagram following. She'll give you more tactical stuff and all the other good stuff on how to do it. But honestly, I just want everybody to know this is basically what I want for every single one of you. Um, you know, people ask, hey, what is it like to work with you? I can tell you in 2024 to 2025, I've seen what so many of my clients have done and the ones that have just radically, truly changed their life. And it's been because it's not because I've taught them how to treat better. It's because I've taught them how to present better and presenting better is what has changed their life. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on, getting people to do amazing one to many presentations amazing challenges, amazing in-person events, uh, and doing basically allowing them to make what they used to make in a year, allow them to do it in days. That's it. So Katie, thank you. Appreciate you. And thank you for being on the podcast. Love it, Greg. Thank you so much. And can't wait to see everybody at the event. That was easy.